Hello, we're going over uh, book questions on page uh, 166 of the book, numbers 15 through 21. Uh, 15, in what two ways can a machine alter an input force? Uh, it can change the magnitude or direction. 16, uh, in what way is a machine subject to the law of conservation of energy? Is it possible for a machine to multiply input work? Uh, that is, it, it uh, can the input work uh, always has to be more than the output work. You can never get more output work than you put uh, into the, the machine. Uh, in what way, what does it mean to say a machine has a certain mechanical advantage? It's how much the machine multiplies the input force. 18. Uh, what type of lever is the output force smaller than the input force? Uh, a type 3 is always a uh, smaller output than input, uh, and a type 1 sometimes. Uh, number 19, um, what is the efficiency of a machine that, re that requires 100 joules of energy to do 35 joules of work? Uh, that is uh, the output work over the input work, so 35 over 100 times 100% 100 gives you 35%. Uh, distinguish between theoretical mechanical advantage, which I usually call ideal mechanical advantage, and actual mechanical advantage. Uh, how would these compare if the machine were 100% efficient? Uh, well, uh, theoretical mechanical advantage or ideal mechanical advantage is if there's no friction, if there's no energy loss, that's what, that's what uh, you, you should theoretically get. Uh, actual mechanical advantage is with friction. Um, and the second part of the question is if the machine were 100% efficient, uh, these would both be the same. Uh, 21, what is the efficiency of, of her body when a cyclist expends 1,000 watts of power to deliver mechanical energy to a bicycle at a rate of 100 watts? Uh, that's going to be the output power over the input power, so that's 100 watts over 1,000 watts, which would give you 10%. And that is it for those. Hopefully you did well and uh, come to office hours if you have questions.